floods in China, Germany, India, forest fires in California, Hurricane Elsa, heat waves in Canada, all these have been linked to be or have been said to be as a result of climate change. Now, if all this is being attributed to climate change, then the big question is, what is causing climate change? If we can know what is causing climate change, then we can be able to deal with the problem because here we are dealing with the symptoms and the problem or the root cause is still within us. We are not solving the problem, just the same drops and they will come coming back, floods, heat waves and more disasters. Today, my goal with every video is to tell you a real, original, authentic and comparing story dedicated to explaining to you why things are the way they are in our universe. That being said, today I'm going to tell you exactly what climate change is in the simplest, most humanly understandable language that you ever find anywhere. But what I want you to do first is to assume everything you knew or have ever had or have ever been told about climate change was a lie. And that I'm coming to tell you the real story, to clarify everything, to debunk those myths and doubts and misconceptions that you have been carrying around for a long time. To get the real story, I got to research. Human beings have been known to keep a track of everything that happens in life. And that is no difference when it comes to climate change. People have been keeping data for over a long period of time. Data on temperature changes, wind speed and direction, sea level, number of animals, number of trees, number of people in the world, tallest man in the world, the number of girlfriends or wives that a celebrity has had in his lifetime, and other things. English East India Company is no different. This is an organization that made observations and collected climatic results between 1789 and 1830-ish. With over 450 ship, they moved across the Antarctic and Indian Ocean and what they were doing is that they were measuring their exact position, temperature and pressure, estimates of wind speed and direction and we have gotten over 273,000 different weather and climate records for the last 1800 years and the early 1900 that was collected by these boats of this company the English East India Company the data they collected is preserved in the British Library What was found from this measurement obsessed crew is that over the last 100 years or so, things look like they have been getting warmer. And like you can see from the graph, the global temperature has been rising. Between 1850 and 1920, the global temperature was generally low but has risen steadily after 1920. And so, what is causing this rise? I want us to look at several culprits or several suspects, several, yeah, suspects that we think all you can assume, all you have been assuming, all you have been told are causing climate change. And what I want us to look at, is it true? The first suspect who have been accused of causing climate change is the sun. It has been said that the sun is getting hotter over time, but is that true? Now, as I told you, people or human beings have been keeping a record of almost everything that happens in their life. And this is no different from this. Scientists have been keeping a record or have been measuring the amount of energy that gets into Earth from the sun. So in short, they have been getting how much energy we get from the sun over time. So let's dive into that and see if the sun could be causing climate change because if it is causing climate change, we are doing away with the sun. Scientists have been keeping a track of the amount of heat energy that hits the top of the atmosphere since 1978. If you can believe me, look at this graph. 
as we can see, the amount of solar energy received by the Earth has followed the Earth's natural 11 year cycle of small ups and downs with no net increase since the 1950s. Over the same period, global temperature has risen remarkably. It is therefore extremely unlikely that the sun has caused the obvious global temperature warming trend over the past half century. What I see from the graph is that the sun follows a cycle of 11 years. That is, it goes up and down, up and down. And this is within 11 years. So let's say 11 years up, 11 years down. And what I'm talking about up and down is the amount of energy that we are receiving from the earth. That is how we are able to, to get this. So if the sun has been following this cycle from the last of the when human beings started keeping data, then how comes it is only now then this amount of energy we're receiving from the sun is higher. Do you see the gap? That means the sun is innocent. And in this case, the sun is not our culprit because if the sun follows an 11 year cycle, where we are as of today, the sun should be giving us less energy or we should be receiving less energy from the sun which means the global temperature is supposed to be going down but what are we seeing global temperatures going up so in this case the sun is not our suspect the sun is not guilty and we can let him rest in his So let's find our second suspect and try him to see if he or she is really the one that is causing climate change. And the person who've been accused of causing climate change is that the earth follows a natural cycle. And this is to mean the earth naturally gets warm and then gets cold. Like the global temperature gets increases at some point and other times it decreases. But that's true, that's true. The natural cycle of the earth warming and cooling is true. If you look back a thousand years ago, you see that the earth has been experiencing seasons of high global temperature and low global temperature. And you've even had people who are infected by a disease I call climate denial syndrome use this as an excuse of their bad behavior. Yes, I know you're wondering, how can you go back 800,000 years? I mean, how do you get data 800 years old? Well, this is explained by the deep layers of ice that we have at the poles. For example, the Antarctica or the Greenland, they have a lot of ice that has built up over time. And do you remember how we found the ancient Takana boy? Well, Takana boy, also known as Nariokotome boy, is a name that was given to a fossil that is the nearly complete skeleton of an African Homo erectus boy who is said to have lived about 1.5 to 1.6 million years ago. This species was discovered in 1984 at the banks of the Nario Kotome River near Lake Trukana. It is estimated that this individual died at the age of 7 to 11 years old. The same way we are able to get data from the bones of these Takana boy is the same one that is used to get atmospheric information from the old ice. Naturally, ice will trap air bubbles. Bubbles of air trapped in these gracious ice provide samples of Earth's atmospheric air when it froze. Also, the chemical makeup of the ice provides clues of the average global temperature when it flows. So if scientists can get ice that is 800 years old, then we can know how the atmosphere was 800 years ago. The ice in the Greenland and Antarctica goes down miles and miles and miles and miles. The downer you go, the older the ice 
Yes, you can even see different layers of ice indicating different years when they froze. It is very similar to the way you can tell the age of a tree by the number of rings it has on its stem. You know, so as you can see, the Earth's atmosphere has been going up and down for the last 800 years, which is definitely not caused by human activities. The increase in temperature we have been seeing could be one of these historical jumps in the past. Now, if you're infected by this climate denial syndrome, in that you don't believe in climate change, or that you don't believe climate change is caused by human activities, thank you very much for watching my video. Subscribe to my channel and you can leave now. But if you're still here, then let's soldier on. And I know you are asking me, Mokami, so what causes these highs and lows of temperature in the past? Well, I present to you an old man called Militin. Milankovic. Now this guy tried to make us understand how changes in the earth's position relative to the sun are a strong drivers of earth's long-term climate and are responsible for triggering the beginning and the ending of glaciers periods that is the ice age. Now ice age According to Google, an ice age is a long period of reduction in the temperature of the Earth's surface and atmosphere. And this, of course, results in the presence or expansion of intermittent ice. The Earth's temperature changes follows a pattern every 100 years or so. It starts around the sort of temperatures where we are all now and then gets colder for around 90 years which is called the glaciers then it gets warm for about 10 years which is called the interglacial period and this is basically where we are now then sort of repeats itself and this is just how the earth rolls you know but mkami i kind of understand what you're saying but then what is causing this rising and falling of global temperatures naturally what is causing or what triggers glaciers and the interglaciers periods and that is where i introduced to you a guy that is called militin milankovic or militin milankovic depending on how you pronounce what english you you know so let me introduce to this man who said something that is going to explain to us what exactly is happening here Specifically, he explained three types of earth movements around the sun and how it affects how much solar radiation reaches the top of earth's atmosphere as well as where the sun radiation hits the earth's surface. He explained that using three cyclical orbital movement, which later we are known as Milankovitch cycle. Milankovitch and his cycle, aka Milankovic cycle, are all about the Earth and its orbits as it travels around the Sun. So here is the Earth going around the Sun. If we look at the Earth, we can see it has something that is called obliquity. That just means the Earth's tilts. You can see the Earth is actually slightly tilted on its axis so instead of the top and the bottom the earth getting the exact same amount of sun at any one time it actually varies over the course of the year but this tilt isn't always the same the earth actually goes into a tilt of 22.1 degrees to 24.5 degrees and back again and this happens in a cycle its whole tail to its maximum and back again takes 41,000 years. It tilts like this because of other planets that travel around the solar system actually tags on the earth with their gravity, causing it to wamble up and down. This is very important because when it reaches its maximum of 24.5 degrees, it makes things even hotter in the summers. This situation of high earth tilt is what causes the planet to get warmer and warmer and this ends the glaciers period and causing 
this spiking increase in Earth's temperature. There are a few things about our orbits that changes the results in those sort of events, but obliquity is generally the most significant based on this theory. Then it's sensible to say that perhaps we are getting warmer because we are tilting more towards the sun. But we have a problem. There's a problem. According to Milankovic, we just had our maximum tilts. The last 10 years are already done. Where we are of today, we should be seeing temperatures decreasing because we are supposed to be starting the glaciers period. According to his cycles, we are tilting away from the sun. And tilting away from the sun means the amount of heat energy that gets from the sun to the earth should be reducing. And if it is reducing, then the global temperatures should be reducing as well. But is that really what is happening? Again, the takeaway from all these though, is that our tilt changes very slowly. A change of about 2 degrees takes almost 20 years. The earth is incredibly stable most of the time and things happen very slowly. As the earth comes out of its gracious period, like we have discussed, its temperatures rises by about 4 to 7 degrees and this generally happens over the course of about 5 years. In the last 100 years on earth, we have seen our temperatures rise higher by about 1.1 degrees. This means things are getting hotter roughly 10 times than we would actually see at a time when things look like they should be getting a bit cold after many complicated scientific hard to process terms we haven't found anything conclusive that could explain this sudden increase we have seen over the last 100 years right this is another myth that is busted by data or by research the natural cycle of the earth is not causing global warming. There must be another reason, another suspect, another culprit that is causing this global temperature. The suspect number three that we are going to talk about is carbon dioxide. Now, I know you have heard about this so many times. You're even about to click out of my video. But seriously, does increase in carbon dioxide lead to climate change? Let's figure that out. Well, it all starts with the sun. The sun keeps us warm and alive. But the sun alone is not enough to keep us warm and alive. We need the atmosphere. Without the atmosphere, the temperatures would be negative 18 degrees Celsius. At night, when the sun has set, we would lose all the heat to space and of course freeze to death thanks to the atmosphere that keeps us alive the atmosphere is made of gases the main gases are methane water vapor and carbon dioxide and these surround the earth and are held permanently by gravity these gases absorb the heat from the sun and later they release it because of this the average global temperature is 15 degrees celsius and we can live happy thereafter. Without these gases, Earth would just be um, a ball of ice, you know, that is just floating in space. Here is a graph showing how carbon dioxide concentration on Earth has changed over the last 800 years. If you look closer, over 800 years ago, in the past, we see that today's concentration are the highest. I know the question you are asking, how do we know the amount of carbon dioxide that was in the atmosphere 800,000 years ago? Do you remember I told you about the ice that is buried miles and miles and miles and miles below Greenland or in the Antarctica? Well, that is where we get our data from. Mostly done on Antarctica and Greenland, the longest ice core extends to three kilometers in depth. Actually, some of the oldest continuous ice cores 
are recorded to be 123,000 years old in Greenland and 800 years in Antarctica. Cylindrical ice cores are drilled out of the ice sheet beneath. The ice has small bubbles of air trapped that makes it possible to measure the nature of gases that includes the carbon dioxide and methane in the atmosphere when that ice froze. Here is a graph of carbon dioxide concentration and here is a graph of temperature increase over time. What would happen if we overlapped these two graphs? Let's see what would happen. Interestingly, when we look at this graph closely, we find that over the last 800 years, the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and the average temperature of the Earth seems to be very closely related. Generally, when the temperature of the Earth goes up, the concentration of carbon dioxide goes up. And when the temperature goes down, the amount of carbon dioxide goes down. But something even more interesting is revealed if we zoom to about 1,000 years ago. Here we go. If you're keen, you will note that the temperature decreases fast, followed by a decrease in the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. If the temperature increases, it was followed by an increase in the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? and especially if you are skeptical about greenhouse gases causing climate change then this is the myth you have been fed but listen here this statement does not tell the whole story in the case of warming the rug between the temperature and the carbon dioxide can be explained you have two bottles of soda one warm soda and one cold soda and they are to be opened which one produces the most gas obviously the warm bottle of soda will produce more gas as compared to the cold bottle of soda and this is just the law of chemistry or law in chemistry cold liquids can hold more gases and warm liquids can hold less gases just like soda When ocean temperatures rise, the ocean releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. In return, the released carbon dioxide absorbs heat and amplifies the warming trend, and this leads to yet another release. Are you with me? Now, click the like button if you are. But let's continue. In other words, increasing carbon dioxide levels becomes both the cause and effect of further warming well this crazy cycle is necessary to trigger the shift between the glaciers and the interglaciers as the effect of orbital changes are too weak to cause such variation okay this is supported by a study that was done in 2010 by shakun and others that looked at temperature changes over the last 20 years which is the latest glaciers interglacial transition from around the world and added more details to our understanding of carbon dioxide change and temperature changes relationship they found out that the ocean warmed fast and that started about 18,000 years ago as the ocean warms the ability of the carbon dioxide to dissolve in water falls which causes the ocean to give up more carbon dioxide releasing it into the atmosphere well the opit orbital cycle triggers the initial warming overall more than 90% of the glaciers interglaciers warm occur after the atmospheric carbon dioxide releases where then is the problem well let's go back 800,000 years ago if we go back 800,000 years ago the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has never exceeded 300 ppm that is parts per million that is how you measure carbon dioxide for example kilograms liters meters kilometers you know ppms but in the last 100 years the amount of carbon dioxide has increased to 400 ppm this means that the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is that 3% higher than it has ever been in the last 800,000 years 
since the increase of carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere we have also seen an increase in the temperature of about 1.1 degrees celsius this temperature increase is happening 10 times faster than it has ever happened this is happening even when according to Milankovic cycle we are tilting away from the sun and the amount of solar energy reaching the earth seem to be reducing it is then clear that the culprit of this global temperature increase is carbon dioxide and without doubt you have heard people talking of the fossil fuel being the main contributor of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere but mokami how does fossil fuel you know cause this increase of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere well ladies and gentlemen buckle up your seat belts i'm about to take you back 100 years ago i'll be your captain so feel free to like this video subscribe to my channel and leave a comment below our destination is industrial revolution atmospheric carbon dioxide has increased by more than 100 parts per million since industrial revolution in the mid of 17,000 human began to burn fossil fuels such as coal and oil human activities has increased carbon dioxide to levels not seen in the past 80,000 years we can't forget to notice the gradual increase in the global temperature since then but how can we tell that is the burning of fossil fuel that is causing this increase in carbon dioxide and not just a coincidence you know now the air we breathe has a lot to tell us carbon is made of different components let's call them components called carbon 12 carbon 13 and carbon 14 the air in the atmosphere has more carbon 13 and carbon 14 which is actually radioactive most carbon-12 is found in fossil fuel and other kind of fuel such as trees in trees. But since fossil fuel has been buried for years and years and years and it has not interacted with any radioactive energy, it does not contain carbon-14 and has very little or no carbon-13. So where am I going with these carbon things and stuff? Look at this graph. Since the Industrial Revolution, we can see that the concentration of carbon-14 in the atmosphere has been decreasing because the atmosphere is receiving carbon that has no carbon-14. But this was only tested up to 1950, you know, when we started testing out nuclear bombs and made the atmosphere more and more and more radioactive. So, of course, we cannot rely on carbon-14, which is radioactive itself. Now what? Carbon dioxide produced from burning fossil fuel or, you know, burning of the forest has a different isotopic composition than the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. This is because plants have carbon 12 and have very little or no carbon 13. And since fossil fuel is ultimately derived from ancient plants and animals buried many, many years ago, you know, Roughly have the same amount of carbon-12 as plants, as trees. As carbon dioxide from these materials, that is the fossil fuel, that includes charcoal, petrol, diesel, gas, the LPG gas, paraffin, as it is released into the atmosphere and mixes with the atmospheric air, the average carbon-13 to carbon-12 ratio in the atmosphere decreases. Studies such as the ice core has determined that the carbon-13 to carbon-12 ratio in the atmosphere are the lowest today than they have been in the last 10 years. Further, the carbon-13 to carbon-12 ratio began to decline dramatically just as the carbon dioxide started to increase around the 1850 AD. This is exactly what we expect if the increased carbon dioxide is fact due to the fossil fuel burning that began in the industrial revolution era. This isotopic observation confirmed that the increase in the atmospheric carbon dioxide comes from plant-based carbon, not from the ocean or volcanic. I'm kind of convinced, I don't know about you, but one more evidence and we all come to an agreement, you know? 
atmospheric oxygen is decreasing. But we also know that burning fossil fuel has led to the recent increase in the carbon dioxide levels because of the observed decrease in the atmospheric oxygen levels. What do you mean? Burning carbon requires oxygen. So when we burn an atom of carbon, we require oxygen for it to become carbon dioxide. If the carbon dioxide increase is caused by burning carbon, that is the fossil fuel, we would expect the atmospheric oxygen levels to decrease at the same time. And that's indeed what we observe from this graph. The evidence is clear that burning fossil fuel have resulted in the increase in the atmospheric carbon dioxide not seen in 800 years ago. Other than global warming causing the increase in the atmospheric carbon dioxide, our use of fossil fuel are actually the source of the increase. Moreover, we know that it is this human cause increase in atmospheric carbon dioxide that is warming up our planet. It is abundantly evident that carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is causing this increase in global temperature that has not been seen in the last 800,000 years. That is since when human beings can get data. It is important to note that it is not the global warming that is causing the increase in the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, but it is the human's activity, our activity, our daily life that is producing this carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. This carbon dioxide absorbs more heat. This heat warms the globe. When it warms the globe, more carbon is released from the oceans and other carbon sinks that still go back into the atmosphere. So can you see this loop? It is evident, it is clear to say that carbon dioxide that we human beings are releasing into the atmosphere is the one that is causing this rapid increase in global temperature. And that guys, that is the root cause of climate change. Continued trend will lead to so many outcomes that i'm go not going to mention because i already know you have had increasing sea levels desertification plants and animal extinction extreme weather increased forest fire occasions and anything else that you have been told but what can we do the reason that i want you to subscribe to my channel and most important hit on the notification bell and that is so that next time i post a video you'll be notified is because I want us to look at the solutions, possible solutions that we can implement in our day-to-day -day lives that are going to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide that gets into the atmosphere by our process or from our processes, from our lifestyles. And that is how you as an individual can contribute in this fight of climate change so thank you very much for watching my video i'm very excited that you came this far it's a big one you know you know it's a lot of details to you know to take in watch it again and again and again share it with your friends anybody who needs to hear about climate change needs to watch this video so thank you very much give this video a thumbs up and this helps me so much than you even think of because the gold theme is able to pick this video and recommend it to more people who also get this information and they might subscribe and so our family is going to grow of people who really care about the environment so thank you very much i'll see you in the next video but till then i wish you a blessed week a blessed day a blessed year and all the best in your life Bye-bye.